Hey there, Floyd. How you doing? Floyd. All right, we are staring into Floyd's partially removed skull. Yep, yep, yep. I hope somebody gave him some aspirin. <laughs> I, think, I think maybe. Maybe. All right, because that's going to be part of the digestive system. Okay. Aspirin, nervous yeah. system, all that fun stuff. Yeah. All right, okay. So we're going to start talking a little bit about how you chew food. Yes, chewing is fun. So how we're going to take food, okay, one delicious chocolate bar. From the mouth all the way out of the body. And we're going to start with the oral cavity and the teeth, which you can see right in the front. Pick, 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 and then the tongue. I want to be a dentist. No, you don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, tongue then is going to work with the teeth to help chew up your food, move it around, and that starts mechanical digestion. And just below the tongue on this model, you can see the salivary glands. They're going to be obviously releasing saliva, which is going to have salivary amylase in it, which is going to hit the food and start digesting carbohydrates as part of chemical digestion. Now when you swallow, the bolus, which is their little food ball, is going to get passed back into the nasopharynx as the uvula Wait, blocks your nose. What do you mean the oropharynx? What did I say? You said nasopharynx. Oh, well, we, that's what the uvula is for. Right. We want to the uvula is blocking and protecting our nasopharynx. There we go. So brownie, I mean the chocolate bar, does not shoot out our nose. Right. Uh, and the food is going to continue down through the oropharynx. Yes, indeed. Down the guys to the esophagus. And we're going to turn. turn the guy around. And you can see the esophagus running actually behind and below the trachea here as it passes through the diaphragm. So we are going to pass that food through the lower esophageal sphincter into the stomach. So get that liver out of the way. Take it's important. We'll talk about it later. Liverectomy. But we are going to look at the stomach. So the food bolus has to pass through the lower esophageal sphincter of the stomach, and it's going to hit the stomach and start getting all sorts of acid and pepsin, and it's going to dissolve the food. We're going to churn, churn, churn. Churn, churn, churn. <laughs> Okay. We're going to change that food from bolus um, into basically what we call chyme. It's not chimey. No. It's or chyme. It's chyme. Um, and that is going to be passing food. That food, that chyme, is going to get passed from the pyloric sphincter at the bottom of the stomach into our small intestines. And we'll look at a better model of that later, too. Ah, yee. Sorry. <sighs> so if we take off the stomach, we can look in here and see the pancreas. Um, and the duct where the liver would have been, kind of coming down to meet the food coming into our small intestines, the duodenum, or the duodenum, or the duodenum, or the dua something. <laughs> hey, just call it whatever you would like. I go with duodenum. That's what I say. Right? Mm -hmm. As we pass that time, through the duodenum, it's going to move through to the center part of the small intestines we call the jejunum. J -j jejunum. <laughs> and the jejunum is going to continue passing food onto the ileum, which is the last part of the small intestines. Through the whole small intestines, we're going to see a lot of chemical digestion and absorption by our body's capillaries so we can pull out all the good nutrients. So by the time we get to the large intestines, we see here the little piece of the ileum is going to be passing basically all the junk and water into our large intestines at the cecum. So you remember that cecum? I'm taking it. Awesome. Surgery. <laughs> Maybe okay. more surgery. If we look right here at the spot where the ileum and the cecum meet, there's a little pinch. That is the ileocecal valve. That valve is going to allow the food to move into the large intestines, kind of small. And at this point, it's not even chyme or food or nothing. It's basically feces. Very watery gook. Um, so the cecum is going to be the portion at the bottom of the large intestines, and off of the cecum is where we're going to find the appendix. You can kind of see it on this model. We'll show you a model later that's better. It's the little this white little guy, guy right, right there. back there. Yeah. So then the food <laughs> now, or whatever's left of the food, is going to get passed through the large intestines as it goes up through the ascending colon. Then it's going to turn and go along the transverse colon, it will turn again and come back down, and you know, all the water's getting taken out, whatever nutrients are left, the vitamin K from your, you know, bacteria mm -hmm. are going to be passing. Everything left at this point is yucko. 
feces. That's it. There's nothing much left. As it goes through the sigmoid colon, that's the little S at the end, we'll pass all of that into the rectum, and then it will leave into the outside world, a toilet if you're lucky, <laughs> through the anus. That's food. That was your chocolate bar. A to Z. 